This is Tom Bernanke, I'm bringing you the absolute best tips for this knee scooter. So if you've got a cast, an ear walker, a sprained foot, a damaged ankle, we've got you covered with these can't miss tips to get your foot feeling better now. So tip number one, see this right here? This is an adjustment to raise or lower the handle right here. What this does is you want to have the handle at belly level right here. So adjust that before you get going. Same thing, this seat right here, you want it so that your knee is at 90 degrees. So you don't want to have to be bending your back. You don't want to have to be scooching forward or back. If you're scooching forward or back, you're going to get sore hips sore legs, sore back, and a sore neck. This stuff is going to hurt you for sure. So make sure you adjust the height of the handles and the height of the seat before you get going. Make sure all the adjustable pieces, so see this right here and this right here, this nut and bolt right here, you wanna make sure that's not loose when you get going. That can fall apart while you're going and that can hurt you. You know, this happens all the time to patients. They have a broken foot or a broken ankle and they end up falling off their knee scooter and it ends up causing them even more damage. So make sure it's all tight. Make sure you're at the right height. See how this one has four wheels right here? Don't get those three wheeled ones. Those ones tip over forward and back. I see that with like baby carriages too. So don't fall over, especially if you're older and you can't move anyway. You're not gonna use your foot to catch yourself. So get four wheels. When you're indoors, use a walker. Don't use the knee scooter when you're indoors. It's tough to get around stairs, levels. Don't do that. That's gonna really hurt you. So inside, use some crutches, use a walker, use this thing for outside and parking lots. Personally, I hate crutches. Crutches kill your armpits. So avoid the crutches, use the knee scooter outside. I love walkers too. Yeah, you're gonna look like an old person. You can put some tennis balls on there to make yourself look cooler, but a walker uh, indoors and for short spaces and this guy for out outside spaces really makes a big difference. When you're on it, make sure you move slowly because when you're moving quick, what happens is you're either leaning forward or leaning back, you're off balance, that's straining your neck, it's straining your back, it's hurting your knees. You're using your other foot and it makes it awkward to move. You're gonna get sore joints. Yeah, maybe you feel good for a day or two, but if you're needing to use this for three months, you're really gonna hurt yourself as a couple weeks go by. Take my advice on this one. Patients always get sore. Be aware of debris and cracks on the ground. You can easily hit something and tip over. The biggest thing too is don't take tight turns. So don't go quick, don't hit the cracks, don't take tight turns. This neck right here is at the proper adjustment level. Make sure the seat is at 90 degrees and your joints will feel good. When you're using your air cast, or your cast, make sure you have this knee scooter so that you can get around outside. When you have a knee scooter, make sure you get a nice boot or cast. You probably already have one, but take that front off, undo the straps, get that air pump out of there, read that instruction manual, don't throw it away like this guy, and make sure the padding's up over that hard rim so it's not digging into your skin. That will make things much more comfortable for you. Get a good pair of socks, but I prefer a compression sock. Get a good compression sock on there, and then to prevent even more friction, a nice soft sock after that. So compression, then softness. Then you can see I'm a little bit long in this one, but I also want to get an insole in there. That will take even more pressure off your foot when you need to take a step. So do up the straps, make sure that hard plastic's on there and pump up that air bladder. That will take a lot of pressure off your sore joint. That will help that knee scooter quite a bit as you're moving. As you're moving heavy distances, that's gonna cause back pain, knee pain, hip pain. All your joints are gonna be off. Your neck's even gonna be hurting. So use this knee scooter for outdoor distances and make sure that the handlebars right here are set at the correct height. Make sure the seat's set at the correct height. Otherwise your joints are really gonna be aching. Get those feeling better. Don't stay sore. When that's all said and done, you have to get some stretching going. So get your stretching for your hamstrings, your knees, your hips. 
you're gonna be pretty off balance from a cast boot, from a knee scooter. So combine all those things into rehab. These are the stretches and the massage rollers that you need to do. This is the quickest way to come back from a long-term injury. You have to get a massage roller. These are like eight to 10 bucks online. They're dirt cheap. Start breaking up the adhesions, the scar tissue, the tightness in your plantar fascia. I was massaging my calf muscle a little bit earlier there, but do it on both plantar fascias, both calf muscles, both thighs, both hamstrings. Right here, you could use these spike balls that are like a dollar at the store to break up your plantar fascia tissue if you're having plantar fasciitis. This usually happens on the opposite foot that you injured. So what happens is the bone or the injury can heal, but the ligaments, the, the muscles, the calf muscles, that's what stays tight afterwards. So here I am working on the thigh. So I worked on the calf muscles, the thighs, the hamstrings because of my microphone here i'm not going to work on the glutes or the side of my hip but you can also work on the hip break all that tissue up and then when you use a towel to stretch your foot you automatically get a lot more mobility and this is what's proven to really work they've done studies on athletes i think i read one recently on olympic speed skaters when they massage rolled before stretching, they had much more effective stretching over a one month period. So here I am stretching my foot, my calf muscles. If you lean into it more with your torso, it's gonna, if you lean into it more, it's going to stretch your hamstrings. So look at that, I'm touching my toes now. Before, when I wake up in the morning, I could barely touch the toes, but now I could get way past the toes. So that works really well. And then you can do thigh stretches, hamstring, glute, and massage them as well. Get that flexible. If that helped, check out some of these videos and subscribe. We love our subscribers. And ask in the comments if you have any questions and let us know if that helped and how you got your ankle pain.